Hello and welcome to Mile High Reefers. I'm Scott Anderson and today we're going to talk about adding a biopellet reactor to my 90 gallon system. Now biopellets are a form of carbon dosing and what's going to happen is, is we're going to put little beads inside of a reactor. These beads are an organic compound that are actually going to produce food for bacteria. The bacteria are going to eat the food that's produced by the bead, but it's also going to eat the nitrates and to a lesser extent the phosphates in your water. Now, this is a really good thing since we don't all have room for large refugiums. This looks like a good alternative to me. So I chose the bio pellets over things like GFO. GFO is a good product, but you have to replace the media often and it, it seems less natural. So to me, going with a biological process to do a similar function to a refugium seemed to make sense to me. Now, the bio pellets are significantly more expensive than GFO, but the cool thing is you run them until they're used up. You put the bio pellets in and they'll slowly be eaten up by the bacteria. And then you just add more. No wondering if it's used up, no worrying about <clears throat> is it good, is it bad, do I discard it and put new in? No, you just add more bio pellets. So we're going to take a look at the bulk, bulk resupply bio pellet reactor and then we're going to wait a month or so and see how everything works out on this tank. All right, so now we're going to open up our bio pellet reactor and see what's inside. Alright, it is awfully well taped up. Alright, so there's the reactor itself with both inlet and outlet on swivels. That's going to be super nice. It's got the mounting bracket built on, which I don't think I'm going to use right away. Comes with flexible tubing. Hopefully enough for my needs. We'll find out. And it also comes with the filter wrench, which will most likely be very important in the future. All right. In the bag, we've got a flow control. This should allow us to set the rate at which the bio pellets tumble in there. So we'll see how that goes. And we got a PVC connector. I believe this goes directly to a mag three pump, which is what they recommend. I am actually going to use a MaxiJet 1200 because I've got a bunch of them. I've got a very venerable graveyard of these guys laying around. So, quarter bulk resupply, these work. They just don't handle the head pressure as well as the Mag 3, but this should do the job very well. All right. We got various slip fittings and connectors. So here is the bulk reef supply bio pellet reactor ready to install into the tank. So I've got it all set up and I'll take you on a little tour of the setup and then we'll go install it in the tank. So I've got the MaxiJet 1200 hooked up. And I chose the MaxiJet 1200 just because I have a bunch of them. And you'll notice that the MaxiJet 1200 connects using this quick connect here. It just pushes right onto the end and then the hose pushes right into that. Super simple hookup. Just make sure you push it in there really tight or it will leak. So not so big on this one because it's an internal pump. You get a little leak, it just means you lose pressure. You'd mess up on some of the other parts, it will leak all over everything. If you don't have the MaxiJet, they also provide this fitting here, which will screw right onto a Mag 3 or a similar pump with the screw threads. And then it's got the quick connect for the hose itself. 
but I'll definitely hold on to this for future builds. So then the hose runs up to the ball valve. This ball valve pushes in with the same quick disconnects. Here is where it's really critical to push them all in. We don't want any leaks. But this ball valve is going to allow me to adjust the tumble of the bio pellets inside. Um, we'll see how critical that is. I'm thinking we want a light tumble, not a rushing torrent. And then from there it runs into the quick connect into the bio pellet reactor. And then these are swivel connectors on here. These are going to be so nice for the install process. They move at 360 degrees. So then you can see I've filled the bio pellet reactor about, about a third of the way with bio pellets. Uh, we'll see how that works out. I can always add more. It's definitely easier to add more dry product than take stuff out when it's wet. So from there the water runs through and then we've got another swivel on the other side. This is your exit line, another disconnect and then run all the way down and then here's where it returns to your tank. All right, so to fill the reactor with bio pellets, we just unscrew the bottom, lift the top off. The center cartridge will then pull out, and you'll see that this just pulls out like that. There is a rubber ring in here. Um, when it came, it wasn't fully pressed in, so just make sure you don't lose that. That is a water seal. And then this little strainer here pours, pulls out, and then you just pour in the desired amount of bio pellets. Again, I'm starting with a third full. We'll see how it works. If we need more, we'll add more. Let's put it back together. It's just the reverse. Drop your strainer in. Put your top back on. Put the canister back in. Put your top on. Screw the bottom on. Then we want to make sure this is reasonably tight, but we don't want to really crank down on it because obviously you crank down on it too much, you can break stuff. Okay, so we got the bio pellet reactor hooked up and I've got it right behind where the auto top off normally goes. I did not mount it to the cabinet. Um, I may in the future, but for right now, um, I like the access, I like the mobility of it. I do have long-term plans for a refugium, so I think a lot of this is going to get reworked in the future. So for now we got the bio pellets and they're going to take the place of the refugium. Um, at least that's the goal. So I'll give you a quick tour of how I set it up. Okay, so you can see that the return pump is sitting right there in the last stage of my sump. So the pump is sitting there, the hose runs up and down to the inlet side of the reactor. Right now I've got the pellets basically turning as fast as possible. I got that valve wide open. Um, Potentially a third of a cup is a lot of bio pellets for this thing. They were kind of hanging out on the side, collecting on the bottom. So to make sure we have good suspension, I went ahead and gave it all the way open. We're not going all the way to the top. They look like they're doing pretty good. Um, we'll see. So far, so good. Not real worried about that. And then the output, I ran all the way back and right down by the pump for the skimmer. And that way the skimmer can get as much of that excess nutrients that's produced by the bio pellets. So what's gonna happen is all of these little bio pellets are gonna sit there and turn. Little bacteria are gonna build up on them. All that bacteria is gonna turn the nitrates and phosphates in my tank into a waste product. And then this waste product will actually become food for my corals and something that we can skim off using this skimmer. 
So this should be a very effective way of lowering nitrates and phosphates. So at the end of this video, we'll go over how well we actually do. I'm gonna go ahead now and test my nitrates, my phosphates, and see how it goes. Um, one of the biggest problems that I have heard with these bio pellet reactors is they will actually skim or take out too many nitrates and phosphates. More the phosphates than the nitrates. And the uh, corals actually need the phosphates to live. If they don't get the phosphates, they cannot live. They need that just like we need nutrition. The problem is, is when they get too much, we get the nuisance algae and everything. So if we end up having a problem where we go down to zero phosphates, we're gonna modify this system. We're gonna run a piece of the intake line to the, or sorry, the output line to the intake of the Maxi Jet 1200, and we'll tee that off so we can send some of the water to the pump and some of the water to the output so that we can keep the bio pellets in suspension and yet let some of the water back into the system. That way we keep the water turning, the bio pellets going to suspension, but we're able to detune the output flow. So if it doesn't work, that's what we're gonna do. Right now, I don't see that happening. Um, this system's designed for a 75 gallon or less system. Um, I'm not too worried about that for the reasons we just talked about. Um, and they really are rough estimates. So the total amount of bio pellets is important. You have to have enough to do the job, but you really can't have too many. Now, I'm thinking with that thing turning like that, it's three quarters full. So I'm thinking that's as much as I want in there right now. But the suspension looks good. Everything looks good. And we will update this video in a couple of weeks and we'll graph the phosphates and nitrates. See you in two weeks. Okay, so it's been about a month since we put the bio pellet reactor in. And all in all, it's working pretty well. It's not a cure-all. It's not like the algae is just going to go away. So you can see that we're still pretty dark on the algae here. But some of the algae, like what you see up here and down here, is actually bleaching out. So it's pretty much a white color now, which hopefully means it's dying out and dying off. I'm not getting the massive expanse of algae that I was in the past. So in that respect, it's worked really well. I've pretty much stopped the expansion of the algae growth, but it still hasn't gone away. So one of the other concerns was is that it could strip all nitrates and phosphates from the water and affect soft coral growth. Well, that's it's simply not the case after a month anyways. Because as you can see, the Xenia, both, sex, both pieces of Xenia, and the leather are doing extremely well. So I don't see any concerns there. Um, it's working out pretty well, I think. We did stop the algae growth. We have no nitrates, no phosphates that are registering in this 90 gallon system. So all in all, I think it's working pretty well. We'll keep you updated as time goes on. But right now, I think it's a reasonable alternative to a refugium. Uh, from stuff I've seen, even a refugium full of macro algae still won't have quick results in removing the algae from your tank. Um, probably at this point, the best thing I can do is to upgrade my cleaning crew. So probably a lot more snails, a lot more crabs, and go from there. But all in all, I think it works. I like the bio pellet reactor, and we will continue to monitor this situation. So I hope you liked this episode on the bio pellet reactor. Um, subscribe. Like my videos, and we'll see you on the next episode of Mile High Reefers. Thanks for watching.